Hi everyone, in this video I'll be doing Advent of Code 2021 Day 9. I'll be doing the problems real quick, then explaining them in detail. The code will be in the GitHub repository, which is linked to down in the description, so please check that out. And without further ado, here's me solving the problems. Alright, so today's puzzle is quite an interesting one. So we're in this cave, right? Um, because the whale crashed into us. We fixed our seven segment displays, but now we're kind of lost and need to navigate our way through the caves. So our location is kind of given as a map here, and the map is a height map. So we're given the heights of various locations around us as one digit integers, because apparently that is the extent of how high this ground reaches. So the question is, we define what a low point is. A low point is any location where all the four heights around it are higher. So for example, consider this one, the nine um, to, the, to the bottom, nine to the right, and nine to the, uh, and two to the left are all higher. So this one is a low point. You can imagine that as being sort of like the low point, basically. The zero is also a low point because the one and the one are to its side um, are higher. Similarly, this 5 and this 5 are both low points. The task for part 1 is to find the total risk level of all low points. Also, I should provide some context here. Low points are dangerous because hydrothermal vents release smoke that flows into the low points because, you know, gravity and energy and stuff. So, yeah, we have to find the sum of all the heights of the low points plus 1. So in this case, that would be 1 plus 0 plus 5 plus 5 plus 4, actually. 1 plus 1, 0 plus 1, 5 plus 1, 5 plus 1. And in total, this produces 14. So, uh, 15. So that would be our answer. Um, yeah, I did this by, I guess, like how you would usually do it. So, yeah, parsing the input. Um, that's just reading in all the numbers and then converting them into a big, big two-dimensional array and turning them all into integers. Then I defined the dimensions of this thing to make it easier to manipulate. Then I just loop through all the points. So for every row and column, so we're representing locations as a pair of coordinates, which is its row and its column. Um, and then first we assume that it is a low point, and then we try to find any points around it that are possibly lower. And if there are any points around it that are lower, then we know it's not a low point by definition. So for every of the four directions that we can look around us, we look at that point. First of all, we have to make sure it's actually within um, the bounds, so we can't have any negative coordinates or any coordinates that go past the end of the map. So check for that and don't allow it. Then we look at the surrounding four points, or potentially three or two, and we check if there are any that are lower. So for example, if we're checking this nine, we would look at this four and say, hey, this four is lower than this, than this nine. Therefore, this 9 is not a low point. That's basically what we're doing here. Um, and then after considering all the directions around it, if it is a low point, then we add its height plus 1 to our answer. And that's pretty much it for part 1. Great. Okay, so part 2 is a little bit more complicated. We define a basin now. Every basin is formed by a low point, and... A basin consists of all the locations that flow downwards and eventually end at a low point. So for example, if we consider this 8, we would flow down to the 7, then to this 6, and then to this 5, which is a low point. Or, or we would actually maybe just flow directly down to the 5, who knows. So it gives some examples here. Um, in that case, the 8 and the 5 would be part of a basin along with several other numbers. So. Yeah, this map is very conveniently designed such that all points are part of a basin, so all of them do eventually flow down until they reach a low point, which I suppose is expected. Um, we're also given that nines are not part of basins, because, you know, if you sort of ma imagine the map, they're like kind of ridges along the thing, so we're not going to consider nines as part of a basin. That's also convenient because um, we get to, I guess, provide a delimiter for where our basins start and end. So if I just cross out all the nines in this map, you'll see they form, they divide the map into different sections. So here we go. Um, and yeah, 
you can see that everything that's not a nine gets kind of grouped into one of four basins. So we have one over here, we have uh, one over here-ish, we have one over here, and we have one right here, which is highlighted. So the nines divide up the board into the basins, basically. The question is, find all the basins, and then find the three largest basins, and multiply their size together. So how do we actually do this? Well, I decided to do some depth first search. So if you're not familiar with depth first search, it's a way of searching through a graph. In this case, our graph is a grid. So it's a more specific version of a graph. Um, and every connection just happens with like the four adjacent edges, I guess. We loop through all the neighbors of a point and if it flows down, then we add that new neighbor to our current basin. So actually what we're trying to do here is we're starting at the low points and then we're working our way up to the rest of the basin. So for example, um, ignore the highlighting for this one. Let's say we're starting at the point five, right? Um, this five is part of basin zero because we're just starting at this, uh, this low point, I guess. And we haven't considered any before. Pretend that's the case. Um, so we're going to look in all four directions, and if we see that we're going up and we're not reaching a 9, then we add it to base and zero. So in this case, we would add all four numbers around it. Then consider these four new numbers, um, and consider all the four numbers around it, and we're not going to revisit any numbers, just so you know. So for example, for this 6 over here, we're going to consider this 7, this 7, and this 7, and all of them are higher. So we're going to add them to base and zero. Similarly, this 6 is going to add this 7. Um, it's not going to add this 9 because 9s are not allowed. Uh, this 7 is also going to add this 8 and this 8, and this 8 is going to add this 9. Um, and then we have this 7 adding this 8, and this 8, and this 8, and so on. So we just start from the low points and then work our way outwards um, to construct the rest of the basin. In a similar way, we construct basin 1. So after we hit a dead end on all of them, so after we reach all the 9s, we, we start at our next low point. So for example, this low point. Uh, we would work our way outwards in depth for search fashion and eventually reach all the points that are basin 1. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, I'm also making a two-dimensional array that stores the ID of the basin. So our ID is just a number describing which basin it is. So basin 0, basin 1, so on. Um, that's represented in this two-dimensional array. I'm using NumPy because it's a very useful library. So we also include this, this function, um, I mean our solution in part 1 to find all the low points. So pretty standard there. And then we do the depth first search. We go through all the low points. So you can see that here. Um, for every low point we're going to keep track of which points we've already visited. We're going to do DFS using stacks um, hopefully you know how to do that. So yeah, for every point we just look through all the neighbors and then if the neighbor is higher than our current point then we can add it to our list. Although actually this would probably this would probably still work if we just did that. Um, I think. 964 or something. Yeah. So it actually we don't we don't need to check if we go higher because we are guaranteed to go higher at some point um, along our path. So I'm actually going to modify that to make it slightly easier. Great. So, yeah, um, we just keep going until we hit nines because we know that's going to be part of a basin. Because at some points, all of the numbers have to trickle down to the low point. If we have any, like, dips, like local minima, then they're also going to be reached at some point because, um, actually, they form they form new low points. So, yeah, eventually um, both of those low points are going to join up and create a bigger basin. So... I guess the new one is going to rewrite, overwrite the old one, which happens to be convenient for us. Um, yeah, precisely. Okay, and then at the end, what we have here is sort of a map describing the IDs of all the basins. So if we just print that out here, um, that might be a bit too big. Let's revert to these small inputs. Uh, we're going to see that every point is associated with a unique ID of a basin. So. You can see this two-dimensional array is just storing the IDs of all the locations, um, describing which basin. You can see this is basin 1, basin 2, basin 3, basin 4, and so on. Basin 0 is going to be reserved for the 9s, I believe. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for part 2. Um, in summary, we go through all the low points, and then we expand outwards until we hit 9s, 
and that is going to form a basin. We repeat that for all the low points, and then eventually we'll just have IDs for every single point describing which basin it is. After that, it's a pretty simple process to just sort all of the, um, actually we have to count, so, you know, looping through and tallying up how many basin, how many points are in basin one, basin two, so on. We sort that and then multiply the biggest three sizes. So yeah, that's going to be it for day nine of Advent of Code 2021. Hopefully you enjoyed today's puzzles. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Um, the code is in the GitHub repository, which is linked to in the description. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for day 10. Thanks for watching.